Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to our video series on applications of dynamic programming and economics. In this video, we're going to talk about the planner's problem and solve it using value function iteration. Let's go. So what is the planner's problem? Often it's useful to consider the solution to the planning problem as a simpler framework for identifying Pareto efficient allocations and competitive equilibria in an economy. The model which we consider is the case where all economic activity is organized by a benevolent social planner. This planner is omnipotent. This means he possesses knowledge of the technology used to produce outputs, our consumers' preferences, the resources available, and he can enforce the specific allocations which he wants to be made. So remember though, uh, this isn't really on the slide, but he's looking out for the best interests of all the agents in the economy. So the key word here is that he is a benevolent. He's not, he's not a, a dictator. He's not a terrible person. He's, he's a, uh, he's a compassionate dictator. He wants the best for all of these agents here. So mathematically, the problem we wish to solve is the following. So over here, we have our lifetime utility function, which we want to maximize. This is uh, a logged uh, or discounted log uh, utility from consumption. And we subject that to the resource constraint or technological constraint, which is denoted by this kind of Cobb-Douglas shape here and our law of motion, assuming that our initial capital stock is greater than zero. And for simplicity, though, we can consider cases which are not the so, but we're not gonna talk about that in the video. We're gonna assume that delta or our depreciation rate is equal to one. So as said in the beginning, we're gonna go and solve this model using value function iteration. And I'm just written, wrote down uh, a couple of general steps for how we do that. So step number one is that we're gonna set up the Bellman equation uh, for V1 uh, KT. That means our first iteration of our value function where we're gonna denote this little subscript under V as the number of iterations. Step number two is that for solving uh, our first uh, equation, we're gonna take our initial guess of our zeroth uh, iteration, meaning, you know, we haven't really iterated it to be zero. And we're gonna solve the Bellman for V1, uh, right? we're going to use this result v0 for uh, vkt plus one step number three is that we're going to use this result for estimating what v2 is along with the corresponding policy function with this we're going to then take that policy function right sub it in to v uh v3 and we're going to go and take the value function uh from uh, V2 and plug it into V3 and repeat that process over and over again. In this case, we're just going to be doing that for three, uh, three iterations, right? Not counting uh, V0, even though I have it there on this list. And step number five is that we're going to look at these iterations to get the general idea of what our policy function goes and converges to. And uh, this is based on just an educated guess over here. But if you wanted to, you can go and repeat the process over and over and over again to go and get that result. So let's start from step one. So step one, set up your Bellman equation for V1. So bam, we have it right there. So step number two is that we're gonna take our initial guess for V0 KT is equal to zero. So again, we're just going and iterating this, you know, one period forward, and we're just going to plug it in zero right there. So we have, we have to maximize this problem here. So uh, clearly, we can see that this function is maximized where, you know, k t plus 1 is equal to 0. This isn't, uh, you know, a thing that you do with calculus. This is just, you know, common sense that you have over here. So our first iteration of our value function, right, where it is maximized is ln a right, uh, plus theta times ln k t plus 1. So step number three is that we're going to use this result and estimate what v 2 k is. So this is where we have the steps for actually going and getting uh, concrete um, information for what the corresponding policy function would go and be because we have something to work with now. So just following the math all the way through, maximizing this problem by taking the first order condition, we get our uh, optimal KT plus one, which would be you know our policy function. I'm not putting G of KT over here because uh, you know it's not our final result is equal to beta theta all over one plus beta theta times our production function. Uh, so this means that if we want to go and 
what identify what v 2k mean the second iteration of our value function is equal to we get the following result at the bottom box in red so for step number four is that we're going to repeat the number of iterations for a fixed amount of time so uh in this case we're just doing three so we're just going to consider uh one more time and uh i'm just plugging in everything i didn't really go through the math but if we solve this equation we should obtain the following policy function that is beta theta times one plus beta theta times our production function all over one plus beta theta all over plus beta theta squared like squaring both those things sorry so step number five is that we're going to use these iterations to go get a general idea of what our policy's value function converges to so um if we go we look our at our last policy function we can see that if we iterate this infinitely we have a geometric series that is in the numerator and in the denominator thus we get the following intermediate result solving that further we get a much cleaner looking policy function where our uh, rule is beta theta times our production function a k theta so that's our policy function from value function iteration so uh that's the video i hope this helps and i hope it explains a lot because you know i had a really hard time uh with this material uh take care i'll see you in the next one